All right, today we are talking about photographing the crime scene, why crime scene photography is important, uh, and what are the processes and procedures that crime scene investigators use to appropriately photograph the crime scene. So investigators have to work against the clock, uh, especially if they have an outdoor crime scene, right? Because they're working against factors like location or weather or time of day. And so they have to work the crime scene relatively quickly and efficiently. And part of that is crime scene photography. So number one, evidence has to be preserved best way possible until it can be photographed. Now, that's not always the case, and we're going to talk about some examples of when that wouldn't be the case in a future slide, um, but number one priority is the evidence um, is maintained or preserved best way possible. Uh, now, photographs are super important uh, for, for um, different reasons, but number one, they provide documentation or reference, and they're oftentimes required if a case goes to trial. And so it sort of helps the jurors that are part of that criminal trial to um, get a picture of the surroundings, get a picture of the evidence that was at the crime scene, and ultimately make a decision. So when investigators are recording the crime scene via photography, they have to maintain the integrity of that evidence. Now, there are a few exceptions. So in cases, for example, where you have somebody that's injured and they need attention, uh, your first responders, their number one job is to give attention to anybody that's hurt or injured or needs help. Um, and also, sometimes accidents happen. So investigators might, as they're walking through a crime scene, they might accidentally step in blood and then leave their own footprints at the crime scene. Or they might accidentally kick, kick the weapon out of the way um, without meaning to. So it, it's understood that accidents do happen. And there are times where first responders have to move evidence or um, contaminate evidence or alter evidence. Uh, or potential evidence, I should say, at crime scenes. But what needs to happen is in events such as those that we have discussed, um, those events should be noted in the, in the final report. So if objects are removed or positions are changed or evidence is tampered with, the evidence might not be admissible in court if there's not a written documented record uh, of that. All right, so crime scenes should be photogra um, photographed, photographed as completely as possible. So here's some different photographs that should be taken. So the area, the whole area where the crime took place, including adjacent areas to the crime scene. Overview photographs should be taken. Points of entry, points of exit. If there is a body, uh, that obviously needs to be photographed. Anything that's considered evidence or could potentially be evidence uh, needs to also be photographed. And then there are specific procedures for taking those photographs. So proper technique as of right now for photographing evidence is an item of scale should be placed in the photograph. What do we mean by item of scale? That's just something that is a size reference, some sort of object that's in the picture that gives the viewer of the picture an idea of the approximate size of what's being photographed. Sometimes those scale uh, images or scale objects could be a ruler, sometimes a quarter, um, pens and pencils have been used, um, but just some sort of scale item needs to be in the picture to give an idea to the viewer of the picture, the approximate size of the evidence that's being photographed. Now, each piece of evidence needs to be photographed at three different angles. And then also, those angles should be photographed separately at three different distances. So you're talking about minimum nine photographs for a piece of evidence. So evidence should be photographed close up and then mid-range, and then some long shots should be captured as, as well. So as evidence, and probably shouldn't say just physical evidence because biological evidence could be discovered as well, uh, as it's discovered, a photograph needs to be taken. 
Now, I put that in the lesson because one of the things we have talked about is sometimes evidence is discovered after the crime scene is initially worked. So if new evidence is discovered, it needs to be captured via photograph. Now, a lot of times evidence is difficult to see. It's difficult to photograph when it can't be seen. And so a process um, known as oblique lighting is used to help investigators make evidence visible for photography. And oblique lighting uses a light source um, positioned at a low angle so that it casts a shadow on the evidence and then will show up uh, in photography. So it, um, let me show you a picture is especially, real quick, let me just say, uh, oblique lighting is especially used for photographing impressions or tool marks, or certain types of fingerprints, and then I probably should have added here footprints as well, because if you'll look at this picture, um, you can see that the light source is positioned at a very low angle. It's casting that shadow on this dusty footwear impression, um, and it's allowing us to to see that, whereas without the oblique lighting, we may not be able to see that footprint. You can see here also um, the example on the left. We can't even see that there are footprints there, um, but with oblique lighting, we are able to see uh, the evidence and then it can be photographed. All right, so that ends our uh, lesson today over Crime Scene Photography. I will see you in the next lesson.